want to share with you today um, some information that I found on an old documentary about um, that was probably filmed over 20 years ago and it was uh, Britain's concern about the changeover from British law uh, and surrendering their sovereignty to the UN or the EU, the European Union and the United Nations because they were concerned about going from British law, which was the Magna Carta, over into Roman, uh, the rule of law, Roman law, which is really a Babylonian law called the Corpus Juris. Now I've been going on about the Corpus Juris because Justinian in between 530 and 560 roughly uh, was the, the mastermind behind bringing this Corpus Juris back, even though I don't think it I think it's always been there, but he was the mastermind in the modern day Corpus Juris that we have today. Accursius, the mastermind behind the modern day Corpus Juris that controls the foreign governing corporate merchant banking system of the world today, as well as the United Nations and the European Union via the introduction of the surname in 1230 AD. The surname is the consent into modern day slavery. And around 1230 or 1215 when the Magna Carta came into being, when that was signed off, uh, that was a um, where the people had just had enough of this Roman uh, draconian rule of law, which was really a mil military style law or a shipping law or corp corporate law, where it was a um, where it was the rules or a statute law where they had to, everyone had to follow the rules. And there was no trial by jury. Um, a lot of those sort of things didn't exist there. You 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 were faced, you were charged, and, and then faced a magistrate. Whereas with the Magna Carta, you had all the rights, the common law rights of land. And um, I've been concerned about it, and I've been trying to warn um, Australia, the, the people of Australia, about what's happening with this Corpus Juris, and obviously with uh, Whitlam signing the. Unidroit Treaty of Rome in 1974, and even when um, um, uh, President Kennedy refused to, to sign the Unidroit Treaty of Rome in 1963, uh, he got his brains blown out the back of the, the boot of his limousine. And shortly after that, Lyndon B. Johnson came, comes in and signs the Unidroit Treaty of Rome. What Kennedy didn't realise, I guess, that he was not the President of the United States of America. He was the President of the foreign um, corporate US or United States. And was that um, British law or, or <laughs> uh, was it really America? I don't think it was. I think it was a private foreign uh, uh, French based um, and Rothschild banking system. That they signed it up to, they signed up to, and obviously, the U.S. Federal Reserve. When President Kennedy wanted to get rid of the U.S. Federal Reserve and bring back uh, a, a true American de jure bank, uh, that was basically the end of of him. Now, this documentary I found, I've taken a, a, a piece out of this documentary to share with you because it explains. This is you know 20 years ago. They were onto this 20 years ago. Or more, and it explains some of the, um, the the legal minds and their concerns about what was happening to Britain and England, and I think it's why now uh, England is is finally starting to, and a few other countries, uh, what would they want to get away from this UN or European Union takeover of this one world government. It's really, um, I think, it comes from. Lenin, I think the, the original uh, plans of this uh, one world government, this really it's a, like a communist uh, plot to take over the whole world in, in a one world system. And uh, the Corpus Juris run, uh, the, the EU and the United Nations operates under this Corpus Juris system. Now I've always been going on about the two birthing certificates. This is the uh, state birth certificate and this is the original certificate of birth. This is uh, the Christian or the, the creditor side of the trust and this is the debtor side of the trust. And obviously 
the magistrates and the legal part, they are the administration side of this trust. And the corpus juris um, is, the, is the law system that governs the debtor side of it, the corporate side, and a corporation is really called a creature in the, uh, in the theories of, of corporations. And a creature is just a subservient animal nothing more than an animal so you really when you come across into here you really are just a caged animal you have no rights uh, um, or look the, the magna carta you've lost your magna carta and because you have chosen to go from the side of common law over into the corpus juris by becoming a citizen of a of a governing corporation that is registered in the district of Columbia and not registered on the the districts of your own country, um, that is the consent that they use to say to you, well, you've joined us over in the District of Columbia. So therefore, if you're an Australian or if you're in Britain, but you're a citizen of a corporation called Commonwealth of Australia or Great Britain that is registered with the, um, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission to the District of Columbia, you then become a resident or a, a foreigner on your own land. And once you're a foreigner, you need a license to do everything. You have no rights on that land. And the very fact, even though you say, no, I was born on this land, but it makes no difference because of your legal standing. You've gone from the Magna Carta and you've entered into the Corpus Juris. And all the uh, nations, the United Nations, states, they are just simply the corporate governments of the world. And all corporate governments of the world, they're all registered with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission the United States, which may be not the United States of America. <laughs> and the minute you enter that and become a citizen of a corporation registered in the District of Columbia and not the own districts of your, your own land, you are considered just nothing more than a foreign animal under the laws of the Corpus Juris, which is the rule of law, which is the old uh, Babylonian Roman law. Whereas the common law, the Magna Carta, is the true English law. You will notice the writing on the all uppercase text, that is the language of the Corpus Juris. The English language here is the language of the Magna Carta, which is proper English. And that's why they fool you, because such as the Commonwealth of Australia written in proper, as a proper capitalized text with the first letter capitalized and the rest is lowercase. That's a proper noun, a proper name. But when that name appears in all uppercase text, such as the Commonwealth of Australia, that's the one registered, as you, can, as you can see here, that's the one registered with the District of Columbia in the United States, in the United States Washington, D.C. Going, going from the Magna Carta into the Corpus Juris. So have a look at this old clip, and it's very interesting. And the concerns, this is many years ago, of what was what's happening in the world finally today and maybe today some of us are starting to um, wake up <laughs> laws of the european union are drafted not by the euro parliament but by the eu commission one of three powerful forums in which the true might of the union resides members of these forums are not elected to their positions nor, we are told, will they ever be. When cornered, politicians and public servants routinely tell the British that the EU is just a trading partnership. Yet, underneath the surface, a different picture has emerged. In 2001, a market trader was convicted for selling a pound of bananas weighed using British imperial measures instead of grams and kilos. British District Judge Morgan, in passing judgment upon the hapless metric martyr, stated, We are now living under a new legal order. The 1972 European Communities Act was a one-off, not an ordinary treaty, but a new way of life. These are new constitutional powers. The British Parliament surrendered its sovereignty in 1972. European laws have overriding force with priority over our British laws. The articles on the supremacy of the British Parliament are now only of historical perspective. They are non-binding. 
We asked constitutional expert John Bingley whether our politicians were entitled to abandon the rule of law by handing over the powers of British governments to a foreign power. The answer is simple, no. We have much written constitution which is not really fully appreciated in this country. And these documents, the Bill of Rights and Declaration of Rights, along with Magna Carta and many other legal instruments, make it quite plain that allegiance is owed to the Queen. Uh, and that allegiance is returned by her through the contract of her coronation oath to the people. And that is not something which may be broken, and our politicians are not entitled to break their oaths of office. It follows, therefore, that no government, with or without a popular mandate, may transfer sovereignty on a temporary or permanent basis to a foreign power that owes no allegiance to the British Crown and is unaccountable to the British people. The new European justice system currently being introduced into the UK is known as corpus juris, literally body of law. Corpus juris is designed completely and permanently to overhaul the British justice system and will include the following. The scrapping of trial by jury. Henceforth you will face a state appointed judge who will pronounce you guilty or not guilty. The scrapping of habeas corpus. You are liable to summary arrest without charge. Under corpus juris you can be detained without charge or any evidence being presented against you for up to nine months. The scrapping of innocent until proven guilty. Henceforth, a citizen must prove his innocence against the combined machinery of the state. The scrapping of double jeopardy or not being tried for the same offence twice. Under EU sanction, Jack Straw, while Home Secretary, gave prosecutors leave to appeal not guilty verdicts if desired. Technically, this could be done repeatedly until the required conviction is secured. The scrapping of non-disclosure. Henceforth, under corpus juris, any previous convictions you have will be made available to the court before your trial begins. There is no presumption of innocence. The French system, or the continental system broadly, the droit administratif, uh, places everything, the subject of the uh, foreign or continental countries, uh, have no rights at all. An Englishman has full liberty, uh, except under the due restriction of law. Under the droit administratif, uh, you have no rights except those that are allowed to you by the state. This fundamental difference is very important because it's now leading, uh, with the takeover of the EU situation, we are now leading to a state whereby we too will come under the droit administratif. And this will stop us having a right to trial by jury. And that in itself is the back door to a dictatorial arrangement. Well, as you can see, it's an interesting um, it's an interesting documentary for that long ago. Those people knew what was going on. There's two dictionaries, two main dictionaries in the world, which is the law of land, the common law of land, and the corpus juris, which is the law of the sea. And there's a, some satanic stuff happening because people would say, well, how did the law of the sea get up onto the land and I think that that's the Masonic system um, truly at work that happens there because and the reason why the goat is the symbol of Satan and you know a lot of people can't make this connection what is the goat got to do with, with Satan and I've said this before the G-O-A-T spelt in English like a capital G-O-A-T um, constitutes a goat, that thing that bear that thing. But when the word goat, G O A T, appears in all uppercase texts like this, and then you go to the Black's Law Dictionary, which is the Black Pope, the Black Nobility. Uh, the Black's Law Dictionary is the dictionary of the signs, not the words, it's of the signs. And it is not a dictionary of English. It um, It's the concepts of the corpus juris, that's what it is. And the word G-O-A-T, written in the all uppercase text, means the sewer. 
And the strange part about the sewer, it is the man-made channels that channel the water from lands down into the sea. And it is through these sewers, these the goat, through the goat, that the law of the sea has channeled itself through the through the channels of the sewer up onto the lands. And that's why the Masonic system is, is really called the underworld, because they're dealing with the, the underworld, which is the sewers, and the world of the dead. And of course, when people are buried, boxed, and put into the grave, they're, they're boxed in under the boxing rule. So once they're in the box, they can't escape that box. Same thing happens on paper. And uh, they enter into the underworld of the dead. And the dead text that is on tombstones is also on ledgers, your driver licenses, um, your bank statements, your bank cards. And what's happening is when you accept this type, this all uppercase dead language text, which is the, the rules of the corpus juris, when you accept that, what you're saying to them is that that's me, I'm dead. This is my name. That's my name and the driver license. It's all uppercase language. It's debased. It doesn't work. And even proper true Latin, when because it's based on a Latin text. The corpus, in this case, corpus juris, to join these two words together to string the sentence as corpus juris, which is a, um, the language, the jurisdiction of the dead. It's got to be hyphenated between the signs in order to uh, bring the words together. And that's found in the old um, the Chicago Manual of Styles. That uh, points it out 11147 of the Chicago Manual of Styles that points out clearly how the hyphen must be used when using the sign language and the sign language when it's used as Babylonian text what they've done is they've removed the hyphens between the, the words so when birth certificate or your name John Henry Smith is written in all uppercase text if the hyphens are removed, it reads John and Henry and Smith. It destroys the name, it destroys your identification. It places you into Babylon, which is just a world of absolute babble. It's, it's bullshit, total crap. But if you believe it and you accept it and you are not aware of this world over here, then you will fall into it and you'll become in grave, grave danger. The, what you've just seen, the documentary, kind of is a warning to the people of the world. This is a control system because it's a military style law. So that when you're in the military, you don't have any rights or anything. You do, you follow the orders of the state. And if you don't follow the orders of the state, you will be punished and even to the point of death. Whereas in the corpus juris, and you keep the Christian name and don't deal with the surname because it's the surname that drags you across into the corpus juris but if you go by only your, your christian name and your date of birth of that christian name if you stick with that then you will um find yourself in the magna carta which is the the common law that only deals with the true christian trust there was no surnames in 1215 surnames came in at 1230 when a curseus uh, the jurist of, of 1230 of the Hohenstaufen reign, he's the one that perfected the Justinian um, corpus juris to bring it back into the modern day standard today. And that is the one that's given us the, um, the ability to, or the choice to stay with the Magna Carta as equitable title or to go across into legal title into the corpus juris. Of course, we don't know this now. That's not taught to us in schools. We always, we're just brought up in this world and we can never work out why we have no rights. Well, the rights are, are basically right here on the birthing certificates. And at the age of 21, before you become an adult, which is an adulterer, you have the right to go back to your Christian name, back to Christ. And if you don't go back to Christ and you remain in this trust over here after you turn 21, after the age of majority, then you will be subject to the laws of Rome, the Roman law, the rule of law, which is the Babylonian trust, and that's where you will remain until you can work out to get back from the side of the, the debtors over into the side of the creditor. The patrician 
the plebeian. Remember the plebiscites they have? And who votes in the plebiscite? The plebs. <laughs> so if you're, if you're voting in a plebiscite, then you've, you're a pleb. So that's a quick rundown of just sort of the dangers of the corpus juris and the concerns that not only just I had, but these concerns were raised 20 years ago before I, I even had any idea of what was going on. And it's only now that I've been studying and searching, I'm starting to find this from, uh, from other people. <laughs> but I uh, uh, just uh, hope you enjoyed that and to get your head around the parallel universe, the two parallels that we do. A lot of people say, you know, there's another hidden account. Yes, there is. This is the account of the, the debtor, and over here is the account of the creditor. When you, want to, when you want to borrow money for your house, you will go to the administration, the administrator, which is the bank, and he will then take the money from your credit account and give it to you over into your debtor account. And if you come back to here, well then he's left paying the debt. That's why they don't want to tell you about the creditor. And that's why the Magna Carta, that is the equitable title, that's why the governments want to hold it. That's why it's outside the Parliament House in Australia, because they want to hold the, the Magna Carta. And while you hand, while you accept the legal titles of the state of anything, then you've surrendered your equitable title to the state. And if you come back and claim back your equitable title by surrendering all your legal titles back to the state, then you will come back to the Corpus Juris and you will have the right of trial by jury. You'll have all these rights that the Magna Carta has, has, uh, has granted you from the beginning. But it's not the governments, it's you and I. We, it's our own fault that we fell over into here and it's our own stupidity and our own ignorance and our own ability or disability to at least look and learn and to, to, to work this out. When I first was starting this, I was called crazy and all this, but it's all there. It's all actually exists in black and white. These documents are there. The standing exists. The Magna Carta is real. The Corpus Juris is real. All this is real stuff. It's satanic to the max, but the satanic side of it is what brings you from the living into the world of the dead.